Hey team, this is Luke at Crusader Machining. Welcome back for another excellent video. After diving into the chaos of lathes last week, let's flip the script. CNC milling's precision and complexity demand skills that'll test even the toughest, most experienced machinist. That's what we're gonna cover today. Last week we talked about, from my perspective, why CNC lathe is harder than CNC mill. I'm going to turn that on its head and go over four aspects of CNC milling that I think take some serious, serious skill. And let me say, I have two homeboys that helped me out with some content for this video. Pat at Job Shopper TN and Kenny at Patriot Machinist. Awesome dudes, loads of experience. The footage that you see in here is from their shop that they were so kind enough to give me for this video. Let's hop in. So the first aspect that I want to talk about in this video is the tooling. When it comes to lathe tooling, for instance, my turning tools, I can fit in a drawer this big, and it's about 50 of them, grooving, turning, cut off. When it comes to mill tooling, when I see the way that CNC machine shops manage that mill tooling, just the sheer weight and amount of them and the size of the tooling always makes me think, wow, that takes a heck of a lot of ingenuity and experience to be able to manage that tooling. Just the tools themselves physically. Not even count laying out what tools to do what aspect of what job on what machine. You got Cat 40, Cat 50, BT 30, all these different types of holders for different machines, ER collets, shrink fit, hydraulic, and I just take a turning tool, I tighten it down, I put in a new insert, I hit start, I walk away, I go home, I'm done. Kind of, just kidding. But when it comes to the milling tooling, from everywhere from a 116 solid carbide mill up to a one inch solid carbide mill, a one inch shell mill to an eight inch big roughing facing mill, ripping material off Inconel or stainless or whatever. That always gets me going. I give a lot of respect to the mill bros out there for the sheer variety of tools that you have and the tools that you use. Not counting, keeping it organized in a machine. Uh, some of the mills I had had like a 32 or a 20 or a 12 station little carousel. I've seen some huge machines that I've heard have 100 tools in the back or 200 tools in the back. I really love seeing that. It's so innovative and so different than what I'm used to. I don't want to say it's intimidating, but it's very cool. Tooling to me is the first aspect of why I think CNC milling takes some serious skill. The second topic that I want to talk about when it comes to the, the skill and expertise it takes and kind of my ignorance in the field when it comes to lathe versus milling is the programming. When I see a CNC mill ripping through 10,000 lines of code in a program, I always find myself thinking, how do they quickly edit that? How do, if they have to change a feed rate or an approach, there's no way that you could do that. On a lot of our machines that we program in my channel, I talk about writing programs by hand, and there are times I do, but it's simple parts. Feed out, face, drill, turn, cut off. I got five little simple operations. I can write that in 10 minutes and the part's good. But when it comes to milling, and just the sheer number of lines that it goes through, I, I, don't, I don't think that that's something that you're gonna easily do by hand. If you're watching this video and you program mills by hand, do you ever go in there and edit it? Or is it 100% cam? It's much different than what I'm used to in the CNC lathe world, where I can come here and find a tool and just change an approach or change a feed rate. Some milling stuff that my brothers ran and other people that I know, they've got 17 tools, 25 different tools, rough milling, finished milling, spot drill tap, 50 times spot drilling and tapping. Totally different than what I'm used to. And again, it takes a tremendous amount of skill and experience. 
The next section that I want to cover is fixturing. We all know what fixturing is. If you don't, it's when you put a part in a mill or a lathe, I guess you could say, but more on a lathe, it would be like work holding. On a mill, it would be fixturing. And take a look here real quick. Here's a video that Kenny sent me. This was impressive. Not just the complexity of it, but just the size. So when you're holding irregular or large parts in a machining center or a mill, your margin of error is so small, you cannot fixture a part incorrectly to possibly damage the machine, damage the tool, make a part defective and out of tolerance. Your skill and experience have to be on point. And not every time you fixture, it's not always like that, but when you're doing large parts, the chain, if you put a large 100 pound block of metal in a machine and have an eight inch shell mill wrapping down at it, removing material quickly, chances of failure, if your fixturing or your tooling is suboptimal, become very high. And of course, in our world, we want to avoid that. We do not want a catastrophic failure to occur, obviously. In the, in the world of a lathe, I put in a set of collet pads and lathe work holding, it has its own complexities as I talked about in my last video last week. But on the main side, I put in a collet pads, I put in a bar, I close a chuck, I'm done. There you go, my main side fixturing. Now there is other intricacies and complexities that come with that, but it's not to the level of fixturing a hundred pound block of metal in a machine that you're getting ready to cut off more metal using metal. It's very cool, don't get me wrong, it's very, very cool and it's something I don't have a lot of experience with is fixturing. So the weight of the part is one aspect. The second part of that that's arguably more challenging is irregular work holding. So if you have a part that doesn't have four square sides and a flat bottom to try to hold it, you might have to clamp it down with something. You might have to drill a hole and tap it and hold it underneath. I, a lot of times, I don't know how they do it. That adds a whole different level of difficulty and a challenge to an already difficult job. Here's one more video real quick of a part being machined and take a look at the fixturing. I don't know how I, how I would hold that to machine it, but my hat's off to the mill bros for going through. and arguably coolest part of this video encompasses the first three tooling programming fixturing it can be summed up in three words five axis when I see five axis work sometimes I drool when you have your part in a whatever fixture it might be and your tool and they start moving in sync and sometimes I see it doing a real complicated operation from my point of view and it's just doing a little radius in a pocket any of you five axis folks out there chime in sometimes you do complicated extensive programming to just put on a chamfer or to put a radius down in a pocket that is night and day different from anything that i've ever done the most i've done has been four axis on a lathe and it doesn't involve a part swinging around like crazy, coolant blasting, tool down in the pocket. It's a whole nother level of psh for me when I see that happen. So when you're doing five axis, and like I say, I'm not an expert, when you're doing five axis, your program must be on point. Sometimes you got 10, 20, 30,000 lines of code that CAM generates. Your tooling has to be on point. It's got to be touched off correctly. 
in addition to your fixturing. Your fixturing, your tooling, your programming. All that takes those years of skill, experience, and expertise all up to this one aspect of machining that we call five axis. So here's another couple videos here. Take a look. And again, these were sent from Kenny, Patriot Machinist, and Pat at Job Shopper TN. So that concludes the video. And before anyone calls me a communist, no, I am not abandoning ship when it comes to the CNC lathe. That's my bread and butter. That's what pays my paycheck every week, CNC lathe. But my hat's off to all my mill bros out there. And just to say one thing, all the folks out there watching this, I give you a lot of credit in manufacturing, lathe, mill, EDM, grinding, whatever it might be. Together, we're keeping the American, manu well, maybe worldwide also, but even so, we're keeping a worldwide manufacturing economy cranking by getting a print, making a part, making it good, shipping it out. So I hope that you like this video, and I'm gonna give one more shout out to Kenny and Pat. Kenny at Patriot Machinist, Pat at Job Shopper TN. Thank you guys so much, you are my homeboys for hooking me up with some footage because obviously I do lathes, not mills, especially not stuff that cool. Share, like, subscribe the video. Find me at Instagram and TikTok at Crusader Machining. Drop a comment below, what did you think? Are you team lathe, team mill, or team both are awesome? Share the video, check it out, let me know what you think. Once again, this is Luke Crusader Machining, signing out and we'll see you next time.